the gigantic Russo-German conflict opens with the mobilization of the Soviet's manpower. All over the Union, men are called to arms as the Nazi invasion machine meets with stubborn resistance by the Red Armies in the field. From cities, towns and villages, a huge conscript army is born to augment the Soviet regulars fighting in defense of the 180 million people under the hammer and sickle. Deep in the interior regions of the continent, guerrilla fighters are organized and armed with revolvers and hand grenades. This is part of the defense in depth policy, which makes every inch of Soviet territory a death trap to the invader. Born to the land, the bush and marshlands are their homes. In this tangled maze of undergrowth, the bands of guerrilla men await the time to strike death and destruction from their jungle fortresses. The strident note of a village bell breaks the silence, announcing the presence of enemy planes. From farmhouses and cottages, the peasants run to their appointed places. Although far from the battle zone, the long Nazi arm of sabotage and destruction may reach deep into the rear of the Soviet lines. This is the home guard of the plains, where bareback riders with Cossack blood in their veins are ever on the alert. Raising cattle in the pastures are herded and driven into the woods for protection. Out of the skies are descending German parachutists, not in vast numbers, but in twos and threes. Silent agents of modern war, as dangerous as the plague. Within a space of minutes, the villagers become a cavalry unit of relentless killers, riding like redskins to the attack. And while the peasants are ever ready to wage war behind the lines, at the front with his men, Voroshilov, Marshal of the Soviet Union, prepares to join action in what has been described as the greatest battle of all time. In the Western sector, Marshal Timoshenko is in command. And in the Southwest, Marshal Budeni, the heavily moustached cavalry officer, controls the destiny of many Red Divisions. Advanced fighter stations, units of the Red Air Force, come in for their baptism of fire. The Soviet has closely guarded the secrets of her aircraft. And now as the signal is given by rocket, the previously well-camouflaged planes set off in search of combat. These are the redoubtable Stalinsky Sokovi, Stalin's Falcons, the frontline fighter pilots who have proved more than a match for the Nazis. Gradually, the tide of war, creeping like lava from a volcanic eruption, drives the populations of hamlets and villages from their homes. Closer and closer come the sounds and sights of war. Over country roads, which knew only the rumble of farm wagons, rattle the lorries and transports of a military monster on the move. the surging gusts of wind that precede the tornado, Soviet tanks head for the place of carnage, where hordes of ironclad monsters charge each other like demented jungle elephants. The subterranean rumble now becomes interspersed with sporadic stabs of artillery fire. is the preamble of a war which has staggered the world with its ferocity. Along a front of over a thousand miles, black armies of millions of men fight furiously. Much of this is similar to what I saw in France in the days before Dunkirk. 
the almost ceaseless activity on aerodromes, the constant surging of tanks and lorries, guns and troops, in an almost incomprehensible panorama. Many tales of individual heroism are told as pilots return after waging war at unbelievable speeds. The soil of the Soviet Union now rapidly carries its harvest of wars, flotsam and jetsam. Even war has its moments of light and shade. And here for the first time we see a batch of Nazi prisoners. The shattered wrecks of men whom Hitler cast into the cauldron of war. At a bomber station, we get a glimpse of some of the ground staff at work bombing up. The Germans have discovered to their cost that the Soviet Air Force is a hard nut to crack. They never let up their terrific hammering of the Nazi lines. This dumpy fighter is a type seen first in action in the Spanish War. Now from the cockpit of a Soviet bomber, the camera takes you to where, hundreds of feet below, the full weight of war is being waged in a holocaust of splintering steel.